To the left, to the l no, too much left. Stop, stop! Sparrow 1 to Puffin 2, do you copy? We have a code red down here. Darcy, I told you. While Jarvis is being defragged, this line is for emergency use only. Please, Sparrow 1 on the comms, boss. And it's a total code red. The caterers are here, and all I'm seeing are cheese cubes and carrot sticks. Where's the showmanship? Where are the Kogi buns? Darcy, you want to get college credit for this? Listen to me. This Avengers Holiday Gala is not my first rodeo. Fine, fine. Ten to the floor, Puffin 2. Wait, why am I a Puffin? And a second Puffin at that. Who's the first Puffin? Bernard. In the hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Robert. And this is Panels to Pixels podcast. And we're continuing our spoiler full podcast of What If Season 2. And then on this particular podcast, we're covering episodes three and four of what if season two so with that we're going to move right along into what if season two episode three what if happy hogan saved christmas and the synopsis for this particular episode which is so funny because i love what what marvel does with these little short quick ones they say when avengers tower is attacked during the holiday party happy hogan must prove his hero chops which he does pretty much it <laughs> which he does um uh, overall thoughts uh and general thoughts that you have of the particular episode rob what do you have when i saw that uh they were doing kind of a riff on you know die hard it it definitely intrigued me and then the fact that they had so many voice actors i mean sam rockwell was phenomenal as oh, always yeah. You know, you had um, uh, what's her name that plays Darcy? Um, oh yeah, <laughs> Kat Dannings. Kat Dannings, yep. Yeah, so Kat Dannings. You, you know, uh, they had Colby a, Smolders was in it too. Colby Smolders was in it. Yep. So they had a lot of great, uh, a lot of the original actors in there. I mean, it's too bad that they didn't have uh, Robert Downey Jr. and uh, Chris Evans. But other than that, I believe they did have Mark Ruffalo. They would had. Well, they did have Chris Evans at the very end, didn't they? Chris Evans has never come out in any what if. Really? No. That guy sounded just like Chris Evans in my... Oh, no, not Chris Evans. I'm thinking Chris Hemsworth. Jeez. Oh, no. Chris <laughs> Hemsworth was... Uh, yeah, he came out. He didn't come out in the first season. Okay. But, um, but yeah, they had uh, Jeremy Renner. They had a lot of the people. They just... You know, John Favreau was freaking great in this. Yeah. You know, so yeah, no, it was. I thought it was actually really cool. Um, it was, of course, silly. Yeah, but it was. Uh, it was in the spirit of what I For think Christmas. Mar- I, spirit of Christmas, but I think it was also in the spirit of what Marvel does. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, And let me tell you, there's been there. There were a few people online that just hated this uh, episode, but I don't know. I enjoyed it. Really, I enjoyed it so much, and. Not for nothing, you know, obviously this was geared for Christmas because it premiered December 24th on in 2023. Right. Mind you, we're we're doing we're covering this. We're recording January 6th, everybody. Yeah, we're we're ahead. We're a bit late, but we're trying to move ahead in a sense of pacing. So that way a lot of people are not really watching those movies and every day and then listening to a podcast. They're probably going to be like, I'm going to listen to this later. So that's my attitude is like, you know, I want to cover this later on and talk about it and have fun later. But this came out and I did watch it on December 24th when it came out. Uh, I really did enjoy it. And I'm a huge Die Hard fan. My friend Ben is a huge Die Hard fan. We both think of it as a Christmas movie. There right. are a lot of people out there the there's a consensus of people out there saying that it's not a Christmas movie. And there are those people like me and Ben that say it is a Christmas movie. And well, it's an action film that takes place during, during Christmas, during Christmas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, it, it falls under both, you know, it's an action movie and it's, you yeah. know, it could be watched for Christmas. Yeah. It's, it's not really geared as a Chris. It's not really, it wasn't never really meant as a Christmas exactly. uh, movie, but I think neither was Gremlins. <laughs> well, 
Gremlins happens on Christmas. Yes, it does. But those are <laughs> those are movies that are just oh okay. They keep you know since they come out around the holidays, so people just decide they want to see it on the holidays. No, 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 no. Uh, the the kid gets the Mogwai on Christmas Eve by his father, and then by Christmas Day, it turns into a gremlin. So, right, but then so. that's that's supposed to be some kind of like horror film type of thing. Yeah, yeah, you know, a Joe Dante the, horror film. And, right, and but Christmas. I'm, right, but what I'm saying is, says because it's such a cult favorite, people are always gonna you know do it during yeah whatever during the holiday the is. holiday right. as a holiday movie because it's Correct. a Christmas reference. It's just like, like a, yeah, a just nightmare like do, yeah, yeah, a nightmare, well, a nightmare of, for Christmas. It's two things. It's a Christmas movie. It's a Halloween movie, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. My friend Jamie Dimmick and I get into an argument about that. She'll be like, no, it's a Christmas movie. I'm like, no, it's a Halloween movie. No, it's a Christmas movie. No, it's Halloween <laughs> It's actually movie. both, really. <laughs> it is both, but you could watch it at both times. Right. Because <laughs> it's prepping us for it. Uh, but the funny thing is, is that I, I just really enjoyed this more than I did the first episode of What If that we did season two where Nebula pretty much played the part of Decker in Blade Runner. And both Sydney and myself really not too much into I don't that. see how that was a Decker. They were, I mean, the it looked like the Blade Runner world, but I don't know. I don't see how she played the, the Decker the, role. The way that it was presented, and a lot of people have been speculating and looking at it as is that she was in the Decker role and investigating a murder for in the future and things of that nature. It was mm-hmm. meant to have the motif. So it was that whole uh, conspiracy investigative work. Right. No, I understand that. And, and definitely, you know, it had the, you know, the Blade Runner vibe, yeah. um, which I enjoyed. I, as a matter of fact, that's one of my favorite episodes this, uh, this season was that oh, okay. because of, that Blade Runner vibe because it had just that cyberpunk look to it, which is something that you just don't see Disney doing. No, that is true. They did. They're using motifs. And I stated it before in the last podcast, when we covered what if see uh, season two episodes one and two, and I said it to um, Sydney saying Marvel's doing in their animated universe for Disney plus with this, what if universe to do what the new 52 did back in comics years ago with the cover art doing film covers right now, mind you in in the issue they didn't have it as the story plot but the cover art on the comics was literally a poster from granted specific films in history like you okay. had a west world one and you had oh a, a terminator one Okay. And things of that nature. So instead of doing that, they they went the next level with the animated series and then actually revolving their story arc (laughs) within the What If series and putting that into the story as like a kind of a plot, which is pretty cool. Yeah, we get that a lot. Uh, We get that out of this one and the next one, too, by the way. Uh, We get this out of episodes three and four. And I'll go into four when we talk about that. But this one I really did enjoy because I'm a huge diehard fan and I just really enjoyed it. Yeah. When I started seeing these uh, shows, that's the one thing I noticed. Is, are they trying to pattern these after <laughs> different movies out there? Because, yeah, there was the first one that looked like Blade Runner. Mm-hmm. The second one, which was the one with uh, Peter Quill. Yeah. Yeah. You it know, was like I the don't... new Avengers for its time, but yeah, back in but... 1988. Right. That didn't reflect any movie that I've ever seen or nope, anything like didn't. that. Nope. But this one did. I think uh, episode four did. Mm-hmm. And, and but then the rest of the uh, the rest of the the whole season did not really do that. It no. was just like it was just kind of like two or three, and then that was it. Yeah, uh, I thought that, that was, was gonna, being a little bit creative. I yeah, think. I thought that was just going to be like an ongoing theme that all these episodes were going to kind of touch upon a classic movie or something like that. No, but w- with each season of any of these shows, apparently there is a theme and something that revolves around it. Like with what if season one, the hidden story plot that continued on from episode one, all the way until the very end was literally about um, 
the I guess the soul stone the stones right and uh with uh uber <laughs> ultron that's out there and and them and then you got the avengers of the multiverse or guardians of the multiverse at that point yeah i mean it, i mean it definitely revolved around the multiverse which you know it's been a big thing in yeah. the last uh year or so but but uh, with this one it was something that's underlying but you don't get to about maybe halfway right yeah well what if has always been about the multiverse yes. no matter even in the comic books and even though they might not say that it's a multiverse but every time a what if comic book comes out mm -hmm. think of it as all right that's in that universe yeah but we've known in time though with comics the with the marvel comics with what if they've made those what ifs canon in right. regular comics and it wouldn't be uh, with the way things are moving forward to with in the MCU that could be, you know, the what if cart no, animated series could be canon to the MCU itself. And I'm looking forward to possibly in the near future, if we do get it where worlds collide and universes collide too, where we get like um, uh, an, a Captain Carter, let's say. Or get the um, Super Doctor Strange that we got that goes through multiple universes, that mm. dark one. Uh, things of that nature. I would love to see something like that. Or an alternate version of Black Widow. Uh, maybe a different version. Or maybe even bring back a version of Tony Stark. And they could easily bring back um, RDJ back as Iron Man for one more. I don't think he's ever going to come back for that. I know that's, that's wishful <laughs> thinking on my part. I, I just love uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s portrayal as Tony Stark and Iron Man, but you know, hopefully, or or maybe we'll probably get the guy from Mad. Uh, what, what was it, Mad Men? Who played Howard Stark? The guy that was in that. I'm forgetting the name of the. Oh, the you're talking about. Um... Oh, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> John Hamm? No, no, not John Hamm. Uh, oh um, no! You're talking about the one who uh, who played uh, Howard Stark. Correct. Yeah. Yes, I know who you're talking about. He's yeah. um, he plays uh, Tony's father, and right. I would love to see him in an alternate version of him in the Iron Man suit at one point, and that would be interesting. But that's yeah, just it I mean, would. It's just that I mean that actor is um, he's older, but he's not that much older. No, well, he's up there in age now. Eh. <laughs> they could so. make a lot of things happen. Trust me. Look what they do with Kurt Russell. Yeah, but <laughs> that's Kurt Russell. I know. <laughs> I think they'd rather get a new actor than you're just trying to. Uh... <laughs> that that being said, you know, <laughs> there's so many. Yeah, what ifs? Uh, you know, what it, what it, what what can or what should uh, Marvel and Disney do? Yeah. Oh, when it comes to the MCU, that's uh that's true. But let's stick to this particular episode. All right. Uh let's 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 talk about this one. So, uh in the very beginning we, we get the watcher and his Yuletide story take and we see the Avengers in uh in Battle during Christmas in the beginning. I thought that was pretty cool. I I thought it was great. Uh And then we got the happy helping with Avengers Tower with the uh, the hat with the iron bots you know happy is like up there trying to guide them and right then, then there was bickering with darcy about his co-name <clears throat> which is uh she goes he's puffin too and he apparently there is a puffin one that is bernard in accounting so apparently happy is lower tiered even though apparently darcy is a professional intern at this point in her career Yes, Darcy's thing is not to work. That's her whole thing. Um, in everything that she's done for the MCU, she's always been the intern. And just like Maria Hill said, is like, have you ever had a real job? And she's like, no. <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, which is interesting, too, because she be she got her doctorate, and we know this through WandaVision. Because that's why they brought her in in WandaVision. Right. So that perversion of her was a doctor at that point 
because she had the backing of uh, right. So that means that in this what if she still hasn't gotten her doctorate. Yeah, she she just keeps moving forward as an intern in all right. different facets of life, uh, whether it be through Avengers or anything else. Uh, it's funny how happy could <laughs> she goes. Well, you could also be known as Turkey One, Flamingo Six, or Parakeet. <laughs> oh, this is what he said to her. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's what she said to him that that Darcy had said to Happy is what he could also be known as. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then uh, apparently it leads on to the reason why we have all this mischievous uh, issues. Uh, Jarvis is being shut down for maintenance. Uh, and Maria Hill mentions that. And she's also known as Eagle One in this. Right. Which is, uh, I think that's a space ball reference to by the way eagle one yeah i don't recall that one okay yeah i'm not sure if they're i'm not sure whatever they're trying to i mean whatever they're if there was like little easter eggs in there that you know yeah uh, possibly they are but it's something that i might have to research later and see if like oh and have fun with it you know yeah yeah exactly so uh, apparently, the culprit behind this is Justin Hammer. He plays the uh, Hans Gruber of the the episode. Correct. So he breaks in with his group, and he wants to cause devastation and destroy everything. Uh, and within Stark Towers at this point, because this is supposed to be long ago. This is this is like before the Age of Ultron, I think. Uh, it's when the Avengers were at their peak. At that point, before I they... believe this is probably again, this is a, since this is kind of a another universe. Mm -hmm. Um, this is probably during after the first Avengers, um, the first one, the first one, correct? Yeah, so that would be like uh, after Avengers before well, each hold Ultron. on, no, yeah, because I don't know, that's a good question because the uh, those uh, robots that uh, he made. Were the Iron uh, Brigade or whatever it was? The Iron Brigade was yeah. was introduced in, in Avengers Two. Yeah, Age of Ultron. Yeah, in Age of Ultron. So this is probably right before that. Yeah, yeah. So I I found it funny that you know they made Justin Hammer the evil doer in this. Oh, well, you know <laughs> he is a prick anyway. I mean, I mean he's let me tell you some some Sam Rockwell just does oh, a phenomenal yeah. job. Yeah. portraying Justin uh, Hammer and he's just great to look at and he's a fun character uh, because of Sam Rockwell. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I always enjoyed that and a lot of people don't like Iron Man 2. I do. I I don't know why people hate It's a uh <laughs> Here's what I would say which is funny because all the, a lot of the movies in those first ten years, there were some good ones, and then there were some okay, some okay ones, right? Yeah, like the oh, Dark World. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we, because these characters were being put on screen for the very first time, mm -hmm. you know, and we grew up with these characters, I think that's why we could kind of say, okay, you know what, it wasn't great, but I'll still accept it. Yeah. After 10 years, once you start giving us crap, now we're going to be even harder on, you know, the whole thing. But <laughs> that being said, um, Iron Man 2 was OK. I yeah. mean, it was it, it wasn't bad. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that. I do favor that more than I do Iron Man 3. And a lot of people go, oh, but it had this whole time. And it's like, oh, you get to see. I'm like, uh. honestly, the, the one thing that gets me and because I'm a New Yorker at heart and I love the World's Fair, the showcase of the New York's World's Fair in Queens. Right. And that they utilize that. And I love that for the fact that the reason why that happened to honestly, and this is a little bit sidelined everybody. And I'm, I know I'm digressing and moving away. It has to do with John Favreau and his love. And that's where he grew up was within Queens. So, uh, he the, the park is still in disarray a lot of people want to keep it up and that's the original world's fair from 1964 and i've visited there many a times and i love going there and they've had it a yearly thing where people would gather 
try to get something to restore the park to where it was during that World's Fair time. There's still a lot of monuments there. There's a whole museum there. And the thing is, it doesn't get its just desserts. It should have been upkeep, uh, kept up with, and um, people should have been donating and making it a landmark, but they didn't. Yeah. But well, I, I mean, th- those World's Fairs were one of those things where... Um, it was a one-off for every time that they came out, too. Correct. And they did it so many years. And and then after that, they stopped doing them because it was supposed to be about innovation. And it was supposed to be about yeah showing um, things progress. that are happening. In, progress and different things in different cultures and all these things. And it's mm-hmm. something that I think... <laughs> I think Disney screwed that up by having Epcot Center where you could have, you know. Yeah, now they're could, stuck in time with that Epcot Center, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, but it's just it's just something that, you know, no one does anymore. I mean, I wish they did, but I don't know what innovations are they going to show that we would not be, like, to us, it would be like, oh, okay. You know, like, we wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, you're going to show us a flying car that actually does fly. <laughs> oh wait they did that <laughs> in captain america all right <laughs> but i uh, to digress i digressed a bit but that that's my whole love for that particular movie and the reason why i have a love for it but the thing is is that um you know we, we got that out of that and uh you know favreau has been a key proportionate of a uh, component for marvel disney throughout that time because he started it with iron man iron man 2 and then it progressed so he keeps doing the happy hogan voice he still will come in as happy hogan on specific films because he is pretty much if you think about it a disney marvel employee himself even though he's more involved with star wars at this point now later later on but um I'm just loving the fact that we got more uh, Favreau in this. Uh, I, I just love the fact that, you know, Happy is stuck on the top floor alone after the Iron Brigade leave him to save everything before Justin Hammer infiltrates the uh, the whole the whole uh, building. Right. Avengers Tower. Justin wants the formula that will make him the next Captain America. And he divulges his evil plan, saying he wants Hulk's blood. And this is where we're set forth within it. And Happy's up there and he has to try to protect the Hulk's blood. Right. <laughs> and it's hilarious. Uh, do you have anything about that whole thing? Because there was a lot yeah, of key moments. My, que- my question is, how the hell did he know that, you know, they had Hulk's blood there? That is a good question. <laughs> it just, you know, it's like yeah, just a little side thing that they, they you know, they, they should have said or something. But like, oh, OK, I'm going to go get Hulk's blood. Well, how did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> so that wasn't very well explained. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I mean, and the whole thing with Happy, I've always found funny that character because Happy is just basically the comic relief of. Yeah. Uh, of and this one, Marvel. he stepped up. He stepped up as his own character. But he's still comic relief. It's yeah. not like, you know, it's not like all of a sudden he, he becomes this, you know, serious you know, guy or something like that, or, you know, superhero type or action guy, but, um, <laughs> which is, you know, it's what makes him charming. I think, I think it was makes the character very charming. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering is like, wow, you know, you, with all the shit that you go through, man, I hope they're paying him really good. I really do. And it's like, dude, what is your paycheck? <laughs> you know what stock options do you have <laughs> what's going on there that is true because i would have been like dude i'm out of here man this fucking place is too dangerous <laughs> i do it for tony man <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, i love how happy is working with maria hill uh we get all the talk and dialogue from Die Hard from happy during that time because it, it's her playing the original Val Johnson version, her and Darcy pretty much trade off on that. Right. So I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, He clumsily drops his walkie and gets it with his two fingers at that key moment, which is so funny and so cool. And he keeps looking for the Hulk blood. 
and he sees the confetti arrow and he gets the Hulk's blood at some point. I I forgot if that confetti arrow came into place later on. I I could be wrong. Yeah, it did. It okay. definitely did. Yeah, that was a that actually happened um almost towards the end where all of a sudden the the, the arrow explodes and you see confetti everywhere. Okay. So it was a little foreshadowing with the confetti arrow that I com- right. completely forgot about. Uh, I just love the fact that he accidentally injects himself with the whole blood <laughs> and through over the time that the goons like hammers goons are going after him. He right. slowly, slowly hulks up. You get the, he's got the leg first, the other leg. Oh no. And then the arms and then the last, I'm just it's... wondering why he trans, why it took so long to transform him though. Yeah. Same here. I mean, you got injected not with just a little bit, but with a shitload of blood. And you're like, okay, you should have just raged out right away. And (laughs) it it started with a leg, then another leg, then an arm. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, I I was wondering about that. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I I enjoyed the the episode, but there's a lot of shit that I nitpicked at because I was like, wait a minute. (laughs) (laughs) Go back there. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Uh, I just love the fact that Happy winds up pulling all the other Avengers. He is trapped and still turning from the Hulk blood at that point. Right. First, he calls Natasha. So we get, oh, I'm forgetting her name. Who who voices her? What, uh, N- Natasha Romanoff? Yeah. Oh, uh, Lake Bell. Lake Bell. Yeah. Right. And she he and she's like in the midst of her own thing and she can't handle it. <laughs> she's being held at gunpoint by 17 Hydra guys at the same time. Then he calls Tony and Tony want is playing. It was, a, it, was a, it was a Hydra assassin. It was a a ballerina who was a an assassin. Uh, she was she was in a they were I guess they were both in a um because remember that the character of Black Widow mm-hmm. was also, I think, a ballerina. Yes. Yeah. So I guess she was in the show and they were on the top part of the stage um, where below them is where the, you know, where the performance was going on. And when Happy calls her, she was being held at gunpoint by an assassin that killed, ah. you know, 18, <laughs> you know, people or oh, something that's like why, that. That's right? where I got the number. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so she's like, yeah, I can't help you. <laughs> and then he calls Tony, who Tony is playing Santa for a bunch of kids. Right. And, uh, and Tony wants Happy to tell a kid on his lap that Cap's shield is more than just a glorified Frisbee. <laughs> and then I, I enjoy I enjoyed that part there where, like, you know, you see the Avengers in that department store and like, yeah, Banner and Clint. At the same time, and Clint's trying to get this toy for his kid. Right. And Banner is like struggling with him at that point. You wait for him to Hulk out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Banner's just like, you know, he's like, dude, just give it to the kid. He goes, I can't. I, I my wife said not for me not to come home without this. <laughs> and I was like, wow. Okay. That definitely sounds like a wife thing to say. That is true. <laughs> and then Banner winds up saying, hey, uh, like I'm super solstice, uh, super super solstice winter low at this point. <laughs> I can't deal with this, and I'm like all the 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 one liners that they're throwing out within the movie. Or the that's episode. the one thing I would say is they had a ton of one liners on here that were great. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially I would say um, when we start talking about the uh, fourth episode. Yeah, uh, that was just full of them there. But yeah, they they it. It had its funny moments. I mean, especially with some of those one-liners. It was definitely geared for the family. It wasn't overt and over the top and wasn't adult oriented. So this is something that can be watched with the kids. Right. At, at any given moment. And the family could have fun with it. So I'm glad that they were able to do something. Yeah. It happened nine days straight <laughs> throughout the the Christmas run or the holiday right. run at that point. So everybody could really enjoy it day by day. But, you know, honestly, it sucks as a podcaster. If you actually get to cover these things that they want to want everybody to talk about. Right. But uh, unless you're doing that every day and that's your only job, you're great. But 
unfortunately not for me now, but I'm having fun talking about it now, even still. And I, I look back at it when I rewatch these episodes, because I did watch them one time per right. those days. And then I watched them again. And then I watched it yet again for the podcast just to have fun. And yeah, like any other human, I do miss out. Like Rob stated before where I, I missed out. It's like, Oh, she was dancing with a Hydra assassin and she took out like 17 or 18 people. That's where I got the confusion. In. <laughs> but uh, yeah. And then I just love how even still with the more references to other movies, Darcy saying uh, Con Air under siege. Then she's like uh, walking my mental blockbuster aisle. Happy. Hey, John McClane focus. And, you know, that's happy saying John McClane focus to, uh, right. you know, to, cause he's trying to explain to Darcy what's going on in Avengers tower. But it was so funny that she was rattling off of all these things that are going on in his perspective based upon movies. Like he, she mentions con air under siege, which is so funny. But then of course she brings up something a lot of young kids won't remember blockbuster. <laughs> hmm. oh the blockbuster days <laughs> oh yeah remember that well you know captain marvel did blow into one in back in 1996 right in the original <laughs> movie so but yeah it, they i thought it was interesting also that you know and it, it was it was cute because she mentioned all these movies mm -hmm. yet the movie that they're you know they're riffing on is die hard <laughs> but she won't mention that and then uh then when he calls her John McClane, it's more of the, yeah, okay, you know, yeah. it's just reassuring <laughs> that <laughs> who they're uh, ripping off here <laughs> or paying homage to. Yeah, that's literally what it is. It's like, right. They weren't going to rattle it out there. Uh, I just love the, the fact that Justin Hammer using the Hulkbuster armor on Happy as he is all hulked out. I thought that was pretty cool. I really didn't enjoy that one. I it was nice to see the old Hulk, but so th so they've had like two or three different designs in the uh, MCU. Yep. And but the first Hulkbuster armor is my favorite. Same here. And I'm glad that they showed that one instead of like the later uh designs, but yeah, that one was actually pretty cool. Um, the last thing I would have would be the Avengers trying to take out Happy since they don't know what is going on. They think he's just somebody who's a villain. Uh, I thought that was a great moment. And then Natasha, of all people, realizes who it is during right. the battle. And then Tony stopping the armor and just and Justin falling uh, and falls out the window. Justin Hammer falls out the window without the armor, like Hans Gruber. He's doing the whole fall thing. Yeah, they. Yeah, they, once they once they did that, I was like, of course they had to do that. <laughs> yeah, and then Happy, of course, saves him. Justin Hammer in the end, even though Justin Hammer's going to have to go to prison, and then Happy apologizes, which mm. was pretty cool. Yeah, actually, you you forgot to mention one that which I was one of my favorite scenes is when Happy just lets loose on all the robots. And, you know, mm -hmm. as he's destroying them, all you see is like oil being splattered on the walls, kind of like blood. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like imagine if the Hulk actually went after real people and started tearing them apart. That's the carnage that you would see would be <laughs> insane. And that's what this was. Yeah. And I, I kind of enjoyed that because I was like. Oh, yeah, I see what you guys are doing. It's the animated way of getting away with gore with not being gore. Exactly. <laughs> so I was like, very nice. Touche. I like that one. Yeah, <laughs> it is cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. It gives a little something for the kids and it gives a little bit something for the adults. Of course. All at the same time. So uh, with that, that, that's all I had regarding like favorite moments and thoughts. Uh, overall, I really did enjoy the episode. Uh, it fulfilled my diehard needs for the uh, holiday season as far as like a, an homage uh, from Marvel Disney. And right. the fact that we got some really great voice actors, you know, we got a lot of the originals. 
Now, mind you, we don't get Scarlett Johansson, we don't get RDJ, but we get everybody else. Which, and Chris Evans, we don't get. So, oh, Chris Evans, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's those three major characters, and it's funny because I I didn't even think that Chris Hemsworth would actually w- would ever come back to this. Mm. Um, but he did, which yeah. I thought was pretty cool. But that just kind of lets you know because Chris Hemsworth did say that he was open to playing Thor again. Um, but rdj and uh chris evans and uh scarlett johansson those are like the three characters or the three actors that definitely said that they won't come back to uh the mcu true and zoe saldana also the same thing where she will not come back uh now to the mcu also so that's why i think that's why you won't see like if they ever do anything with uh guardians of the galaxy um and they have, but you don't. You won't see a lot of them come back. No. Um, the only one, like, uh, what's her name? Um, Karen Gillan. Karen Gillan was the only Nebula. one. That, yeah, Nebula. She seems like the only one that really. Karen Gillan, Chris Pratt would definitely come back because he's actually he's contracted under Disney Marvel to fulfill that whole Star Lord character. So right, that's but, why at the very end of the last uh, Guardians yeah, movie. Yeah, but that's that's kind of a, you know how that is. That that might be wishful thinking. It is wishful thinking, but the thing is the way they left it off is that he could come in at any given time. Correct. And But that uh, do they have a contract on him already or not? That's what we don't know. That's a good question. But I know with Karen Gillan, she left it open that way. Right. Um, Dave Bautista is not going to come back. Uh, I don't think... Uh, Mr. Rocket Raccoon himself is not going to come back. Bradley Cooper. Oh, uh, Bradley Cooper. Yeah. No, I don't know. I mean, listen, if he <laughs> he would have been doing the exact same thing that all these actors did, which is sit down in front of a microphone. Well, and just, Co- yeah, well, that's what he got paid for. <laughs> right. Just fucking. Yeah. He could do that at his own house. It's like, all right, I'll, you know, <laughs> Sean Gunn literally played Rocket. Bradley yeah. just gave the voice. So I give more props to Sean than I do Bradley. I, I love Bradley Cooper as an actor, and he's got the great voice for Rocket. Yeah, but Sean did a lot of physicality in it. And I'm not trying to kiss Sean's ass at this point, everybody. I'm just saying flat, flat out. Maybe it's because I'm the, the person who loves suit actors or or stunt people. You know, and, this, and Rob's just like shaking his head and holding his no, head. No, because I think that <laughs> I think what made it was Bradley Cooper's voice. I mean, it did, way- it does, but really, all he did was sit there. That's just like James Earl Jones with Darth Vader. <laughs> okay, so tell me something. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Now, we're, now, we're, now, now, you see, now you fucking woke up the dragon. So I'm sorry, but. There have been many people who have done the suit of Darth Vader. Yes. And James Earl Jones' voice is what makes Darth Vader. That is true. I <laughs> okay, will guarantee so, you that. <laughs> yes, I would say I agree to because that. Because this is not this is not performance capture in the sense like let's say uh Andy Circus with a Gollum. That's a whole different story. Or doing uh, Caesar, or when he did Caesar, yeah. Or, uh, Planet Planet Apes. I mean, if James, if uh, if uh, what is it, James Gunn, Sean Gunn, Sean Gunn was actually voicing the actor also. Mm-hmm. Then I would have been like, okay, he became the character. All right, you know. So that's how I see it. You know. So, but. Sometimes the the actor's voice makes a lot of the character is what you say. Of course, because (laughs) listen, the thing is, like I've listened to James Earl Jones for so many years and his voice and what people some people don't realize this, his voice changed. Oh, it did from New Hope. Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. When you hear his voice in in those three, even though it is him, Mm -hmm. his voice is still different on all of them. Yes. I think his best voice has been on Empire. And then when George Lucas was trying to do, what is it, his little uh, (laughs) prequels? 
well, not prequels. When he did the special editions, uh, where there was like some uh, additional things with Darth Vader, mm-hmm. and there's one that says "Bring my shuttle." Right, so Darth Vader in the original says just bring my shuttle, but in the special edition he says, uh, "Prepare my star destroyer for 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 my arrival or something like that." And when you hear that voice, that was somebody else, and you're like, "Yeah, that doesn't sound like James Earl Jones." You guys tried, <laughs> but that's not him. Yeah. So when you're attuned to a certain person, that's why I think in the bank in the Obi Wan show where. It was James L. Jones. Yeah. And, but they it was James L. Jones' voice being used through AI. Mm-hmm. And I think what they did was they went back to the Empire Strikes Back dialogue because I was like, that sounds a lot more like the... With the cadence. Darth, the, with the Darth Vader from Empire. Yeah. Than the, the, the other way he that, speaks, the cadence yeah, exactly. of the way he so, speaks. Yeah. So it's it's sometimes... Yeah, it's it's the voice. I mean... That's why I hated the fact that they changed um, Boba Fett's voice. Oh, same here. In the original, I thought he was really cool, and then all of a sudden, they, you know, they had a uh, this actor. Uh, what's his name? Um, <laughs> I forgot what his, his name is, but yeah, I, I <laughs> it was just like that. Doesn't they ruined that character for me? That being said, let's get back to this. Okay, uh, right. yeah, I don't have anything else left off or uh, any notes or well, the only notes I was saying uh, would be Justin Hammer saying famous last words Hulk Hogan, and it was Happy Hogan. He's a Hulk now at that point because yeah. that, he was a full blown Hulk. So that was pretty funny. Uh, I have a few quotes. Uh, Hammer saying, "Cuffer, I'm sick of this chick roasting my chestnuts." And that yeah. was after he, she was talking to Happy on the walkie-talkie after he had uh, injected himself with the Hulk blood. And then uh, one from Darcy saying, uh, this is a Narnia for dorks. After Happy says, you thought the doorknob was the main way in, didn't you? Hmm. <laughs> and the last yeah. yeah. Go ahead. No, 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 no. go ahead. The last I one would- I would have would be Happy with the Hulk blood. It's time for that hammer to get nailed. Hmm. You know, typical hero- heroic words from a superhero or right. what we don't like to talk about with Black Adam. I need a catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, uh, they, they like I said, they had some really good one liners that uh, made it a lot of fun. All right. Do you have anything else that you want to? No, offer? actually, you. Did a lot of the quotes that uh, I would have probably <laughs> said too. So, <laughs> all right, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, next up would be uh, "What If" season two, episode four. What if Iron Man crashed into the Grandmaster? So, with this, the synopsis is very simple. Tony Stark challenges the Grandmaster, leading to a Grand Prix turn demolition derby death match. And pretty much, this is Death Race 2000. Yeah, <laughs> this is a lot of things. Death Race 2000, Mad Max Fury Road, you know, Mad Max. Um, it could be Fury Road, too. Fury Road. It was, uh, what is it? Ben-Hur. <laughs> oh, yeah, because of the chariot. Yep. Right. Uh, there's a lot of things on this thing that was like, okay. Yep. So literally the the way it takes off is what if uh the the battle in New York Tony didn't drop through that hole after throwing the uh nuke or missile right to uh the uh the alien ships and then closing and sealing off that whole thing. Yeah, it he closes gets trapped. before right, it closes before he comes back to earth causing him to crash land on Sakar. Mhm. Where uh, he's forced this, uh, to stay by its ruler, the Grandmaster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, the Grandmaster, as we know, we remember him from Hulk Ragnarok. Uh, not Ragnarok. Yeah. Uh, 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 Thor Ragnarok. Was it Thor Ragnarok? Yeah, it was yeah. Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. 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 So uh, we, we find out and we, you know, Jeff Goldum basically reprises his role with voice 
Uh, we get um, who's Valkyrie? I forget her name. Oh, that's Tessa Thompson. Tessa, yeah. So she comes back as her character, and uh, we Taika, get a Taika with TD comes back as uh, as Korg, Korg right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if Topaz came back. Uh oh yeah she did uh Rachel House, mm-hmm. the I think she's the one that originally did Topaz in the in the movie she came back to voice. Let me uh, make sure of that. <laughs> but it's pretty cool that you got a lot of these uh actors coming back and voicing their characters within these shows. Right. Uh, we all know that Jeff Goldblum is who Jeff Goldblum is, and he'll do whatever he wants. You know, he's done the new Jurassic World movies. He's done his own stuff on Disney Plus. He did two seasons, I believe, of uh, the world with uh, Jeff Goldblum. I think it was called. It was interesting back in the day when I when they originally premiered it. Right. So yeah. So the uh, that actress Rachel House. Uh, was the original Topaz, and she came back to voice that act, that awesome. character. Yeah, she was also. She's actually also coming out in Godzilla versus Kong: The New Empire. Oh, uh, Godzilla X Kong. Yeah, <laughs> they or can't say X- versus <laughs> anymore because right. versus was the last movie. But yeah, that would be she's, pretty cool. She she's mostly been a um a TV act uh, actor. Yeah. So. Well, she's broadening her horizons, at least, with the film, which is pretty cool. She's about to come out in Time Bandits. Wait, wait. There's a new Time Bandits? According to the, according to this, <laughs> I knew that you were about to... According to her filmography on the television, it mm. says, to be announced, Time Bandits. Fianna upcoming miniseries. Oh, no. <laughs> Please, don't touch my childhood favorite movie. So that's uh, interesting. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. I don't want to think about it. <laughs> all right. So basically, uh, Tony gets trapped in his world. He gets trapped on Sakaar. Uh, of course, the Grandmaster loves him. And the first thing he thinks of is, you're Mr. Middle Mojo, man. We've been waiting for you. Oh, we've been hearing all these cool things. Blah, 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 blah. And uh, other possible names for tony that were in the ether throughout the uh uh Sakaar would be tin man and rocket man but they they left it off at mr metal mojo right. man for uh well i like the fact that he when he first saw him he says oh look at that porcelain skin i should call you Porcelanus." <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's what i thought about this episode so this episode okay. the great thing about it was the fact that they let jeff goldblum just be Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. And they just said, J- just go. <laughs> just go with it. Go just with it. Do your thing. It's like if Robin Williams was still alive <laughs> and they told him, hey, so this is kind of the script that I want you to follow, but I know you're going to do your own thing. <laughs> and you just record Robin Williams <laughs> and you go, you know what? Everything he did was freaking perfect. Too bad we just got to use one segment of it. Yeah. I imagine the same thing with Jeff Goldblum, which is there's probably like hours of recordings of him of just outtakes stupid, that we could just listen stupid to. Stupid stuff that you can listen to that are just amazing. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past him. Yeah. Uh, I I just love how it's like at that point he uh, the Grandmaster wants to befriending Tony in the beginning and introducing Tim to everything that's going on within Sakaar. We do get a distant view of it, but I didn't really get a good view of the, um, I would say the castle as it were, because Mm -hmm. back then we had like four heads that we could look at. And I always look because Beta Ray Bell was always there in the original one. I'm still looking out for Beta Ray Bell. I don't know if he was on there for this. No, he, well, Kind of, but he it it just it was not very well defined as from okay. what I saw because I, I was looking out for the same thing. I was like, oh, I wonder if they're gonna have the same thing, and and it was more of a oh, kind of looks like it, 
if you squint, <laughs> if you squint really, you know, <laughs> you a lot, like, make a belief in your eyes, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> but uh, I really enjoyed it. You know, uh, it was a Death Race 2000, but animated based, so it's more of a car instead of what we got in Thor Ragnarok, where Thor winds up getting in the ring and Korg was telling him it's like oh we battle to the death blah 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 yeah gladiatorial gladiatorial but in this case and this particular one it's more well it's still still gladiatorial but with car racing <laughs> right <laughs> i will say man um so one of the things i liked a lot about this was the designs of the cars were amazing yeah. like i me being you know a graphic designer uh, you know by heart um <laughs> as i looked at it i was like hold on and i was i would pause the screen to see all these designs to see you know how good they looked i was like yeah it's pretty clever man i mean they did some really great designs there yeah cool and uh we get more valkyrie in this but the funny thing is uh, it, it made me chuckle. Just go over my notes a little bit. Uh, they throw hamsters. I know. Uh, chinchillas. Chinchillas. Well, I <laughs> yes. had that here, too. <laughs> it's uh, they were they th they were throwing cans and then they threw chinchillas. And because throwing food just seemed like such like a, such a no, no. Well, <laughs> the fact that they were in a, they, they were having issues with food. There was a food supply chain. issue. Right. Yeah. But it's okay to throw these little animals, you know. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I said to myself, I was like, I wonder if PETA has anything to say about this. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past them, but yeah. Yeah. It's like, all right, uh, we're not going to talk about food, but we'll throw. But they're fake animals. They're animated. Yeah. And you <laughs> know that somebody's going to have an issue with it. Oh, Very much like with the Guardians of the Galaxy. They're animated. They're not real. I understand your feelings of animal cruelty and, you know, how it's projected on screen. I feel it. I understand it, but I know it's not real. That What if they threw babies? How's that? Okay. Well, they did. Even the Flash. They... <laughs> <laughs> the Flash movie. Oh, all those that's babies right. got thrown out the window. They got thrown and out the window. And people still had a problem with that. Uh, uh, it's like <laughs> you, you can't win. You can't no, make no. That's even why if you, it's animated, you can't make a joke. And no, uh, and this is why I just say, honestly, screw everybody else. You know, <laughs> people's feelings, and just do what's actually funny. And that's uh, it. it. It's funny for other people, and it's funny for and it's not funny for others. So it, uh, you're not going to satisfy the mass populace with one joke unfortunately yeah. you know what if it's not funny for you then don't watch it that's it that's exactly all it that, all you, right? you have the opportunity if you heard about it oh hold on do you need to have the script ahead of you before you go see the film <laughs> but the thing is it's like just don't watch it put blinders on but i i'm not trying to like like be against people that have these issues but i understand their perspective but Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go into that. I don't want to go into tirade. Uh, I, I just like to seeing uh, Korg with Snuffy. The chinchilla? Yeah. <laughs> I just day, love yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he, he got like a little chinchilla right there. So come on. There was something good that came out of it. Korg, the rock guy, got a chinchilla. <laughs> I he, made it was... a, he made a friend. One interesting uh, one scene that I liked was the slow motion walk that oh, they were doing. Oh, yeah, that Korg makes them do. <laughs> and at first, you know, it's it's your typical, you know, slow motion walk of the heroes going out into battle kind of thing and stuff yeah. like that. But when Korg says, I'm glad that you guys walked, you know, slow for me, I always wanted to do that. That made it even more funny because I was like, oh, so they were walking in slow motion on purpose. It was intentional. <laughs> so what's what I liked about that was that when you go watch the scene again mm -hmm. and you see them walking in slow motion, if you look at the characters in the background, yeah. they're in real time. 
<laughs> <laughs> Which is something you didn't realize until you look at it again. Until you, right. Until you see it again. So <laughs> Uh, another part that I really did enjoy was Gamora coming out at the end of the, of the fight with a missile. Mm. Oh my God. It just reminded me of her with the big Gatling gun at the end of, um, guardians two against Nebula where she had this big, huge cannon, but the missiles were on the car that she was on. I mean, she wasn't carrying it, but yeah, her character It's interesting how Gamora in this one, um, she's like the same, you know, she's bent on, you know, being, um, of service to her father Mm -hmm. and trying to be, uh, the favorite and how Tony actually turned her, which was actually really cool. So, yeah, uh, I, I like a bit of her character here. I thought it was pretty cool. I also like the fact that just like in Guardians of the Galaxy, where you know when she tries to play tough and all that stuff, but somehow she always gets like screwed in, either you know zapped by something or mm-hmm. something to not let, her, not show the audience out there to let her guard down. No, not so the fact that she is like, hey, this amazing warrior and you know skilled and everything. Mm-hmm. But you never see that that much. What you see is she trapped the person that she wanted. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, she gets zapped and now she's on the floor tased. That happened in Guardians of the Galaxy. That is true. That happens over here, too. Mm -hmm. So, like, you never see her really, like, the person that she's going after really, like, come after him because she always gets stopped. (laughs) So... She doesn't finish the deed that she set forth. She for. doesn't finish yeah. her fucking job, which okay. makes her very bad at her job. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was supposed to kill Quill and get, you know. That, That's right. And that, then what does she do? She falls in love with him. What yeah. the hell? What? <laughs> <laughs> that being said. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, other cool things that came out within this. Uh, Tony's new armor for the new race. That was cool, actually. That was really awesome. It was like a transformer (laughs) because he loses his chariot. And then next thing you know, his armor turns into Into a race car. car. So it's a transformer. And then at the very end of the race, when he wins, it turns it back into his armor. Yeah. And I don't know if you noticed, like the wheels were not attached to the car. Yeah. They were... um... It was like some kind of electrical field or something like that that it was, uh, but it wasn't attached to the car, which I thought that was really cool. I was like, oh, okay. And then I was like, where did I see that at? But I don't know. Like I said, the designs of the cars were really cool. The armor was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought that was, I, I just, <laughs> again, like, you know, Tony wins the uh, race and then uh, Grandmaster is like, well, it's a tie. And just like anything here, if it's a tie, it's to, it depends on me on you know to uh, make a, you know break that tie, and I say I win because <laughs> it's my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that doesn't work out too because uh, oh, what's her name? <laughs> winds up Topaz. Like, Topaz winds up crashing into him, and with the scepter, winds up making him turning him into goo. Yeah. <laughs> which is what we've seen in uh, Thor Ragnarok in the very beginning too, when the guy turned into like a sludge. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So that's a callback to that, which is pretty funny. But in this case, it happens to the grandmaster himself and somebody, he was like, can somebody get a bucket? Can they get me together and put me there? Hello. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like I said, I think, you know, I think these, these, uh, I think these episodes have been some of them have been fun, some a little too silly or something like that. Yeah. But like these two that we just covered, I think probably the silliest ones of them all. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, they 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 were definitely put as uh the comedic ones, comedic that, and know. tongue in cheek just to have right. fun. But they're uh, uh, not to spoil anybody, but I'm sure the, all of you have watched ahead, but when we get to that towards the end, I would say eight, uh, seven, uh, no, eight and nine 
Well, no, there's nine. So seven and eight. They, those are a little bit comedic too. Uh, what? Hell, Hella finding the uh, ten rings. Uh, no, second to last. Then that would okay. be okay. All right. So that the would Avengers, be eight. Eight. The, oh, what if the Avengers assembled in sixteen oh two? Yeah, it was very Shakespearean, very comedic within that too. Yeah, I would say that one too. I mean, was uh. Also, you know, again, they had some really good ones. Uh, some better than others, yeah. I would say, and I would say that uh, these two episodes, I'm not gonna say they're my favorite of the uh, of the whole season, but they were enjoyable enough for me to, you know, I laughed at it. Uh, and like I said, all the one liners, yeah, that came out of them were just great. Um, I did laugh out loud at some of those, but <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's so far this series has been pretty cool mm -hmm. and i think like i think everybody agrees or most people agree that the second season much better than the first oh the animation definitely by far as the animation far as, looked uh, the smooth. same to me it's just the stories i think were better yeah um it's what's unfortunate is that um a lot of the original actors from the mcu mm -hmm. Uh, did not come back for this season. No, as they didn't. To the, but the only one that I saw that did come in was, like I said, Chris Helmsworth, that who was not in the original, I believe. Mm. So, as a matter of fact, let me double check on that. What on the original season? Yeah, the first season. Yeah, because we got um, <clears throat> Jeremy Renner, right? Ruffalo. We got uh, within this particular season, we did get. Uh, Wanda herself. I'm forgetting her name. Um, we also got Colby Smolders. Oh wow! No, you know what? Chris Helmsworth was Thor. Yeah, in the original. I, I, okay. Yeah, I thought. I so thought. Too. I thought for some reason he didn't. Uh, he, it was uh, somebody else. But no, I guess it was. Yeah. When when Steve and I covered it, went two years ago. Wow, it's two years, everybody. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, when we covered it, I remember that. And I'm like, I was questioning myself because it would spend two years. I don't go back and re listen to my podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is that, yeah, I remembered that, that, you know, Chris was, Chris Hemsworth was very much involved with it. He was one of the few that actually showed up. Same thing. I think Samuel L. Jackson at one point did one for the first season. As he well. did. As a matter of fact, um, the the only people that did not come for you know for the second season, oh, the first season, uh, Carol Danvers was uh, voiced by Alexandra Daniels instead of um, Brie yeah. Larson. Yeah, so I remember that. But yeah, the, it's the fact that they do get the a lot of the original actors in there. You know, it's like look, we got Lawrence Fishburne for Christ's sakes, for as as Goliath in the <laughs> second episode. And we got uh, Michael Douglas as Hank Pym again, Haley Atwell. Uh, like I said before, I'm forgetting the guy from Mad Men that, that did Howard Stark. I keep forgetting yeah. his name. Yeah. Damn Can it. I tell you my problem with um, that second episode? What is it? So... <laughs> <laughs> and I know that you already covered this, but that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. My problem was, was the same problem I had with Indiana Jones and the, uh, and the dollar destiny, which is Michael Douglas. When I, I, when I grew up with Michael Douglas, you <laughs> know, Michael Douglas voice. Yeah. As he's older, he's gotten that older voice. He's got the gravelly voice. Like his father exactly. Kirk did towards right. the end. Yeah. So, but the thing is that they again he was using his voice on a younger version of himself. So it sounds like that old guy in a young body. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. And I was like, it threw me off a bit. I was like, eh, okay, uh, I'm not thrilled about this uh, character <laughs> portrayal here because of that. It's the same thing with like Indiana Jones when uh you know it, Harrison they, Ford, it, yeah, they use Harrison Ford's original voice of you know that he as he's old now. On the younger version of him, and they could have like, tweaked it, and he actually stated that in in an interview, saying, "I had to go to a higher register at the time when I was when I was younger in order to do that voiceover work because my stunt double and blah blah blah." I was like, it, "You still sound like an old dude." 
Yeah, it's like <laughs> a high register. <laughs> Why couldn't they just? Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, I actually I had uh, talking about voiceover work uh, because I am doing an episode of the Buffyverse podcast on Podcastica. I got to listen to uh, the the new Buffy the Vampire Slayer Audible that came out. And it has a lot of the cast. So uh, Amber Benson wound up putting it out and putting the story together with her husband. Uh, and they had a, a they had Charisma Carpenter, Anthony Stewart Head, James Marsden, uh, the guy who played Clem in the show. Right. Uh, uh, a whole bunch of a lot of the original actors team back. But Anthony Stewart Head, of all things, I've seen him in Ted Lasso. He's older. Yes, he's older. Right. And he was the tea time guy back in the 90s, who before he even got Buffy the Vampire Slayer as Giles, he always was older. But the way he I, I had to think about it, too, as I'm listening to this audio book. Oh, oh, I, does he sound so out of breath? And uh, and I'm like, I realized it because he wasn't like that in Ted Lasso. If you <laughs> listen to Anthony Stewart head as he does right. interviews. He's older, yes. He's not a young man, but the way he portrays him in the audiobook, and I realized this, I'm like, he's just playing an older version of Giles. And I'm like, oh crap. But he kind of overdid it to the point where I'm like, why does Giles sound like uh, uh, a feebly old man? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Drusilla, but you can't do that. Uh, it, I, I just like, I listened to it and I'm like, Okay, I get it now. Right. After I finished the freaking audio book, and I realized I'm like, because I I listened, I watched an interview with him not too long ago, and I'm like, son of a bitch. It's because I couldn't put it past the fact that Giles isn't like got to be like in his seventies. Right. Anthony Stewart Head's probably in his pro, I would say sixties at this point. But even still, it's just like, oh, okay, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but but the thing is, is that when it came to Indiana Jones, like you said before, they could have dialed it down and make it a higher pitched or, or changed it, you know, um, used a harmonizer uh, within his original audio just to make him sound younger in comparison, because they could use uh, his voice references from Temple of Doom and Raiders or even Star Wars and then just utilize that same yeah. thing with Michael Douglas, too. The problem is that I think a lot of these actors are some actors are, you know, like uh, James Earl Jones decided to sell his voice because he no yeah. longer could do Darth Vader. So, so be it. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of these actors are so against that um, because of AI and all that stuff that they're like, no, you use me the way I am now. Yeah. And for me, it's more like, well, if that's how it's going to be, then I'd rather not even de age the person. I'll just use a different actor. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. so I think actors and actors need to kind of, because think about it. If they say, oh, well, I, like I would put it on my contract. Yes. You could use the voice of my younger self. You're still paying me the same. Exactly. Period. But that's, that's, I think what came out out of those, um, those strikes that were going right. on and the, uh, the whole thing that was going on. I had a laugh and chuckle because my mother was going for physical therapy. I'm not going right. to say where, because where we live, James Earl Jones lived there. And she had the chance, and I had to sit there while she was getting physical therapy with Mr. James Earl Jones. Hmm. And I, they were having a conversation, and he goes, uh, and at that time, it was during the pandemic, he was saying how, you know, uh, coming to America 2 is coming out. Right. And it, and I, it made me laugh for the fact he made the joke at the time and I didn't really catch it. He goes, I was literally sitting on the job most of the time. Because he literally was laying down throughout the film. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> he was saying that to his physical therapist. He goes, oh, you don't have to worry about me. And, and his typical James Earl Jones voice. Right. Uh, you don't have to worry about me. I'll be uh, laying down on the job. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I was like, I'm like sitting on the other side 
in the waiting room hearing this conversation and my mother was like, James, are you doing your legs? You really need to do your legs. <laughs> and I'm like, holy shit. Okay. But, yeah, it was the weirdest thing. But the funniest was is that uh, just sitting there listening to him talk about that because at the time he wasn't doing as much. Right. And I think at his age, he he's paid very much what he's worth for being there, even for like five minutes, you know? Right. Yeah. And even for his voice. Now, I don't know how much he made for his damn voice, <laughs> but no, I do voice, appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. Voiceover work and acting. I think, of course, they, they, I don't, I don't know what the, uh, um, well, what the rights that he paid for, like th- them having the rights for it. And they oh, have, yeah, a- I'm not sure how that works. Like, I don't know if it's like, hey, you pay for the rights, but I still get royalties or something for it. Or is it, hey, I just gave my voice to you guys and that is it. You guys own my voice from this point on. Yeah, that's you know, it's, it's yeah, like the it's that like the better Luke, be a lot of money for the fact that yeah, you know, it's the Lucasfilm thing where like you know, like Carrie Fisher said, I don't even own my own likeness. Yeah, and you they know, had a sex George. doll made out of Princess Leia too. So I don't, <laughs> wow. not to go into that, everybody, but I'm just stating that that's actually in her book, and then she actually has a live HBO broadcast of her one night woman show that she talks about that as well. But yeah, they, um, yeah, I, I would like to know exactly what they, they paid for the voice because that's longevity. It's like, he can never come back out and say, I'm going to do this live. Well, we don't need you. Yeah, exactly. We have your voice. So it better be millions upon millions of dollars. And I, you know that that's going to be very interesting to see within the next few years to see how this whole thing you know like the the strikes and how the whole thing with uh ai and how yeah. you know how it's progressing and and how the studios really didn't give in a hundred percent saying no we'll never use ai you know their whole thing is like no we still have the option of exploring ai but uh, it'll be very interesting again to see what's going to happen in the next few years when it comes to that, especially with uh, with actors and because honestly, if you know, if the families agree on it, it's like sure, you know, you want to bring back I don't know, uh, Cary Grant or Humphrey Bogart or whatever it is or Elizabeth Taylor, <laughs> you know. And just do an AI version of her or whatever. And, you know, yeah, sure. You know, like they did with, um, what's his name? Um, Peter Cushion. On, oh, yeah. With the likeness rights. And they had somebody with double with a mask and then they kind of CG to everything else. Yeah. Well, it wasn't a, it wasn't a mask. It was, he was completely CG. <sighs> no, no, no. From behind. There was a whole back, uh, behind like shot coming from behind uh-huh. with a, a, a silhouette and that was a mask that was somebody an actor in a mask with the chin and everything uh, i i looked into it it was like oh okay but the funny thing is they couldn't get anything from like uh the knees down and the reason why is because he wore slippers on set in star wars yeah but how you call it in rogue one they mm-hmm. showed him completely. Yeah, but they had to factor in that there was an issue too. That uh, I, I went deep dives into this because I'm a huge Rogue One fan, and uh, I, I watched everything that that came out about it. And they talked about that how they couldn't get a full ver- like head to toe version of him because anything that they had on film, whether it be video or, or film wise always was from the knees up they couldn't get him his like his knees down yeah grandma talking you saw him coming into rooms and stuff like that i mean it was i think you're talking about anything that was a close-up was more of yeah he didn't wear anything from his knees down or something but yeah they have full body shots of him well 
I don't know. I remember that them saying that there was an issue with that. Mm. That was it. But um, I thought it was funny. <laughs> but all right, all well, righty. I, I think we uh, talked a lot about this, and we kind of digressed towards the end about everything else. <laughs> Very true. But uh, uh, the only news I would like to talk about, we've talked about this on your particular podcast, Rob, but we'll talk about it here. Uh, Jonathan Majors is no longer Kang the Conqueror or the oh, person. Kang. Kang the Conqueror. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, don't know. Well, I forget who he was in Loki. I, I keep remember forgetting. Uh, well, it's Kang, but uh, what's his name? Uh, the Oh, what's the other what's the other word they call him oh the other name they call him exactly that, that's he, what i was thinking who has no name or something or? Uh, well, yeah no no those are people that i i don't talk about in life but uh, <laughs> it's kang literally uh he's no longer in the role of kang or any version of kang so they're looking to replace that particular character but they're also looking to replace who would be the villain within the marvel cinematic universe from now on now, mind you, within it's still somewhat early in the phase of Marvel when it comes to this. But yeah, uh, the things are, are open. They're changing names of movies and we'll see what happens after that. But uh, yeah, that that's about it. When it came to the news, uh, everything went back into uh, filming as far as Deadpool 3. Uh, so we could look forward to that and hopefully that will save the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We hope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping. I really want it because uh, if we all know Ryan Reynolds, he'll go over the top and the first R-rated Marvel Cinematic Universe movie will be one that everybody will take their kid to. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. But. With that, uh, we'll move on right along. Oh, wait, there's one more thing. Oh, great. Tell us. Steamboat Willie is now part <laughs> is now public domain. That is true. Steamboat Willie, everybody, not Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Only Steamboat. the character Steamboat Willie from the silent film, black and white with the dots. It's a black eyes, black like kind of ears and stuff like that. You can't do Mickey Mouse. So, uh, Steamboat Willie, you could do whatever you want. And now they have somebody had already realized that, oh, the rights are coming up. We can make a horror movie. So, what do they do? They release it at the time when the rights are up for Steamboat Willie. Yeah, I saw, I saw that uh, trailer. It's a stupid trailer, but <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, it's, it looks like it's made by the same people who did the Winnie the Pooh one. Oh, yeah, Blood and Honey. Yeah. And the, uh, or the, uh, mean one. Which was the Grinch one? Oh, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, there, there's one called uh, the Mean One, which was a Grinch version of a horror movie. And on top of that, they um, uh, the the way they did that one, it looks like the Jim Carrey version of the Grinch. The makeup, right? So, oh, okay. <laughs> if you're into that listeners you know if you're into that kind of stuff <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh yeah yeah that's interesting a lot of people are, are are blurbing about it on youtube and on podcasts so yeah <laughs> okay uh but for uh, that uh we, we put everything in there for the feedback this week obviously uh nobody sent in anything which i understand the holidays we're just coming out of them but for you to send in your feedback, all you have to do is go to our Facebook group, which would be facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels. Uh, you could also find us on Instagram, which is attached to Facebook, which would be at panels to pixels podcast on Instagram. Uh, it's going to be the same posting and we'll post an image and say, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And uh, we could be emailed as always. Just email your thoughts, panels to pixels one at gmail.com. Panels spelled out, two, uh, two is spelled out TO, pixels and the number one at Gmail. Uh, you could write yourself out a regular texted email and we'll read it. Or if you want to just, you know, record yourself and then send it as an attachment on the email, we'll play it and you could be part of the uh, podcast itself. Uh, we could be found on YouTube 
And all you have to do is search Panels to Pixels podcast. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring that bell. So that way you'll be notified when any time the uh, the podcast is up on YouTube. And uh, like anything else, we can be found on Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice. And with that, if there is a rating or review, please give us a five-star review because that what is what gets us highly noticed out there. So uh, I always tell everybody, be honest, but if you really love what we do and you feel that we're entertaining enough, please give us a five-star and just write something in there, a little blurb. Just, you know, write out Mark rules. I don't care. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, have fun. Uh, but other than that, uh, where could listeners hear you, Rob? Uh, you can listen to me on Fantasy Picks Movie Edition, where we take movies that were big budget films and failed at the box office. And we do uh, reviews on those. And we also do our top five uh, movie draft uh, with that. And we have uh, actually started also doing a um, a segment uh, reviewing and highlighting uh, film composers. Awesome. And as always, you could hear me here on Panels of Pixels podcast, as well as Adrenaline Cinema podcast. Uh, right now, we're not sure. I'm I'm trying to reach out for scheduling for Adrenaline Cinema podcast, but with uh, Panels of Pixels, we're going to continue our what if coverage for season two. We'll probably do an overall ver- uh, review of Echo when that comes out. So uh, apparently, they're going to drop the whole season in one day. So that way uh, you guys could watch it just like we do. And we'll do a whole review of it. That's on the ninth, right? I believe so. Yeah. So we're going to do that at a later time or just maybe in between. What if, but uh, you know, just check up on us on uh, the facebook.com forward slash panels pixels. And we'll notify you as well as Instagram. Uh, you could also hear me on Monarch uh, on for our coverage of Monarch on Wilhelm which is a uh, co-collaboration with podcastica.com. So we're covering Monarch Legacy of Monsters on app for Apple TV Plus for Wilhelm and Podcastica. So you could hear Ben and I cover that. Uh, Rob was actually on for the fourth episode. And uh, we are going to complete that, I would say, within the next week or so. So uh, check us out there and have fun and listen to us there if you're really into Godzilla like I am. Uh, other than that, you can hear me on the Buffy Verse podcast. I'll be on there uh, for Homecoming, which is uh, the title of uh, season three of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So that's what we're going to cover. So other than that, I just want to thank everybody for listening. I'm Mark. I'm Rob. Thanks for listening. Different panel, different pixels, same podcast. This was Panels to Pixels podcast, and we will see you on the next panel. Bye-bye.